good afternoon sir good, good afternoon please sit down mr anirudh this is your first attempt at the civil services so this is my fourth attempt your fourth attempt and for interview first interview first interview okay chaliye very good ji bataiye ki what is the composition of uh, india's uh, power production sir in power production uh, we produce thermal power which is 60% the major component apart from that we have renewable energy uh, in which around 60 gigawatt of solar energy and 38 gigawatt of wind energy is there let me put it this way our thermal is only 53 now other parts please tell me in percentages if you know yes, you are telling me in absolute numbers yes sir tell me how much is hydro what percentage sir i think it is 12% but correct you are right how much is uh, renewable energy sir renewable energy uh, totally it is uh, around 100 gigawatt sir which comes out to be around 30% correct is about 27 how much is gas produced sir gas is if i am not wrong around 6% and nuclear sir nuclear is 2% suppose you are asked how will you reduce a transmission and uh, the power losses which amount to about 24% how will you like reduce them sir to reduce transmission losses we need to improve firstly the situation of the discom sir improve their technology and also use of smart meters or other such things might help sir and the power purchase agreements need to be reworked because they are not being obeyed sir by the means the discoms and the gencos so these are some of the no i am talking of loss i am not talking of uh, that part of power which is used by discoms and not paid for <clears throat> that is different because well, there are huge arrears towards them but this 24% how to reduce it um meter will help to some extent but um, what is the major cause of these losses losses sir the major cause i am not exactly. okay what is the composition of power which is under construction there are large uh, amount of uh, you know power which is under construction in both thermal as well as sir what i know is that the under construction projects the share of renewables especially solar will be more as compared to the new thermal project sir how much exact figures i am not aware <laughs> it's quite substantial wind and solar is uh, quite a bit 120 gigawatt is under construction and hydro is 46.8 this uh, these proportions at least why no more uh, nuclear power the main reason for uh, less usage of nuclear power is that it is expensive to set up initially and there are concerns regarding waste disposal that is why it is uh, means uh, resisted by the locals and thirdly the technological issues are also there we are largely reliant on uh, foreign technology like japan or uh, russia for means some components of nuclear power project why uh, all over the world uh, france for example 60% of their power uh, production is nuclear yes so they also have disposal um, uh, technology sir after the fukushima disaster even the europeans are scaling back on nuclear power sir because but before that they had plenty yes sir so because it's mainly sir capital intensive nature of the nuclear power sir which and also our uranium reserves we do not really have uranium we need to import it sir so these are some of the reasons that i know sir okay but we can make out of plutonium which is produced in the natural uranium or enriched uranium uh, fueled reactors sir that is the second and third stage of the uh, planned nuclear means program of india but currently we are uh, still in the first stage so we have not reached up to that level where we can use thorium or plutonium sir thorium we have large reserves they can be used in fast nuclear breeder reactors yes sir tell me what is the second law of motion and uh, where does it become invalid 
so the second law of newton is force is directly proportional to acceleration i thought it was other way acceleration is directly proportional to the force you apply yes sir that uh, yes sir, that means proportion works both ways so sir it does not apply at quantum scale as well as at cosmic scale sir what is quantum scale quantum scale is means quantum physics where uh, the size of the particles is a uh, subatomic that is the quantum scale sir okay and then there is the cosmic scale sir. okay why does it not apply at the quantum scale sir so the main reason that i know is because the wave nature of the particles take over their means particle nature so that is why there is uncertainty associated with it schrodinger's equations are there and schrodinger equation doesn't speak about the uncertainty it speaks uh, uncertainty is uh, heisenberg uncertainty principle yes sir so um, but why nuclear uh, what about special theory of relativity that has nothing to do with it non application of newton's law of motion sir i can i'm not able to currently recall sir and connect yes. and cosmic uh, level kya hota hai cosmic level means at the level of universe when we look at that mm -hmm. then there is dark energy and dark matter which can not exactly be explained from newton's laws but kepler law of motion are derived from newton's law only and they are applicable yes sir kepler's law are applicable but they are applicable to the known part of the universe and the known part of the universe is only 5% of the okay. total universe and uh, about unknown part it's not applicable uh, no sir unknown part uh, the dark energy and dark matter what laws actually work there are difficult to know sir, determine difficult or impossible sir the scientists are trying currently they are the best and uh, general theory of relativity is different from special in what respect sir i know that both are different and current the general theory of relativity as far as i can recall is uh, it talks about the uh, time and space uh, continuum and the special theory of what happens it talks about it but what does it talk sir it basically says that time and space around the universe is like a rubber sheet mm -hmm. so uh, every means basically it says that both are connected sir and you ca cannot change one without changing the other that is the basic idea behind general theory of relativity thank you yes there are major transformations going on when you look at the international scene right you are studying international relations so tell me some of the major transformations which are unfolding now across the world ma'am the first major transformation that comes to my mind is the shift in economic center of gravity from atlantic ocean to indo pacific ocean and second is the rise of china and the emergence of uh, the so called new cold war and the third is the ukraine crisis and how it has means uh, pushed uh, russia and china together as well as uh, the west and strengthened the nato ma'am and one more uh, trend that i observe is the uh, increasing reliance of the west on india to counter china these are some of the trends that what else what about uh, africa it used to be called the lost continent no yes ma'am now it is the continent of hope ma'am why and um, the main reason is that it has a young demography and it it is attracting investments from all across the world a wealth of natural resources which can be used to process like rare earths or other uranium which are necessary for the future ma'am it has the resources of the future a young demography and rising investments ma'am what about the uh, empire ambitions of some countries you haven't mentioned them ma'am the main countries are china and india these are the two major players means who are the empire ambitions those who want to you know expand the empire and rule in africa ma'am no in the world where ma'am sorry ma'am i'm unable to understand the question ma'am okay it means like russia what it's doing yes. turkey yes. what it's aspiring iran yes. okay what about middle east churning that's going on there also yes, various alliances cross yes, 
मैम द मेन रीजन बिहाइंड द चर्न इन वेस्ट एशिया इज द स्ट्रेटेजिक रिट्रीट ऑफ यू एस ए मैम बिकॉज ऑफ दैट द पार्टनर्स मीन्स द मेन एक्टर्स इन वेस्ट एशिया आर ग्रोइंग इन प्रॉक्सिमिटी टू ईच अदर लाइक वी रिसेंटली सॉ द ईरान एंड सऊदी अरेबिया पैक्ट सो एंड द सेकेंड इज द राइज ऑफ चाइना एंड चाइना स्ट्रेंथ प्रोजेक्शन इन टू वेस्ट एशिया मैम सो देर हैज़ बीन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द वेस्ट एशियन क्वाड मैम सो यू ए एंड इसराइल एंड यू एस एंड इंडिया so these are some of the trends what is the bharat ratna mam bharat ratna is the highest civilian award that is coming. have uh, women got this award mam there must should have been women but <laughs> must and should have been no tell me some you cannot think of some women who must have got it mam lata mangeshkar ji yes. was there and apart from that i hope indira gandhi ji your hope is right and um other i'm unable to recall right were foreigners given uh, bharat ratna are they given ma'am i think mother teresa has been awarded she was considered indian but name some other foreigners who have got the bharat ma'am i think it should be nelson mandela yes one more and ma'am recently there was there was an agitation about uh, by tribal groups and they put the uh, government on notice that if you don't uh, do this by 2024 elections you know we will increase our uh, protest what was this sarna religious code that they were asking for ma'am they are asking for a different religion ma'am a recognition of a different religion what religion is that ma'am that sarna itself is the religion ma'am so what kind of religion i mean ma'am the religion of the tribal people ma'am and it is basically an attempt to resist the conversions that are taking place ma'am this is my limited knowledge on and how did it have some uh, connection with the parasnath hill uh, controversy parasnath yeah ma'am the the hills are considered sacred by the tribals as well as the jains and uh, the government had recently opened it to eco tourism and uh, other kinds of tourism so there was pr- protest to keep the hill sacred and uh, means uh, not allow unrestrained tourism into the hill that was the so you are a follower a fan of eco tourism yes. so tell me what you did in eco tourism ma'am in eco tourism i have done Uh, many activities such as snorkeling or scuba diving or trekking or paragliding these are some of the activities i have undertaken ma'am at various places which are famous for eco tourism such as the mountains in the himalayas himachal pradesh uttarakhand andaman nicobar goa what are the advantages and disadvantages of eco tourism ma'am the main advantages of eco tourism are that it provides Uh, a sustainable livelihood to the locals and it incentivizes conservation of nature because the nature itself yields uh, revenues for the locals and the main disadvantages ma'am are the unrestrained and careless attitude of the tourists which often leads to the I means dumping of plastics or destruction of the local ecology ma'am now uh, you are from up yes ma'am Nepal is on your border. Yes, ma'am. What was the recent happenings, developments in the elections there? Ma'am, in Nepal. Yes. Ma'am, in Nepal there are three major parties currently, and Pushp Kamal Dahal Prachanda ji is the CM. He his party is actually the third largest party, and he has taken the support of uh, means Nepali Congress, I think, of K P Sharma Oli, and. uh and there is another party which is uh uml i think of of uh, sher bahadur daiwa but what was the election that they had recently ma'am that was the confidence motion means no they elected somebody as president yes, ma'am. who ma'am powdel was powdel, yes ma'am yes. yes ma'am and he is the third president why third president Ma'am, because the constitution is new, ma'am. The two thousand and eight, they became a republic. So he is the third president. How will this uh, impact uh, on relations with India? 
these present changes ma'am the current government in uh, nepal is leftist in its inclination ma'am so china also prefers that the government in nepal should be leftist because there is ideological um, symphony between china and nepal ma'am so that is why means the experts believe that the nepal might gravitate more towards china ma'am in in the cur- cur- under the current dispensations rule even after the election of this president ma'am i'm not exactly aware all oh, right thank you mr anirudh yes you had mentioned that you know the us is looking towards india to counter china yes in this context recently two senators had introduced a resolution in the us senate relating to our borders with china are you aware of that sorry sir i'm not aware coming to jammu and kashmir yes the pakistan prime minister had made a statement saying that we should normalize relations with india but then it was clarified that it is based on two premises one that the acts of 2019 are withdrawn we our government takes back and implementation of the un resolutions now what are these un resolutions which pakistan wants to be implemented un resolutions of 1948 sir one resolution that i know is for a referendum in kashmir that is the last issue that is the last step why can't india implement the un resolution what is the stumbling block sir in holding a referendum no in implementing all the resolutions the resolution uh, the holding a referendum is the last step of the resolution there were first second third res- issues which had to be done first only that has been done this was to take the main issue was that sir the entire uh, means kashmir should first be given to means india as per the agreement which was signed between india and maharaja hari singh sir that has not been done well you are partly right basically the un resolution said that first pakistan shall withdraw all its forces and the razakars and everybody from the area which they occupied that was the first step the second step was india will place a small amount of forces in that area for law and order and once that has been done then the third stage was the referendum to ascertain the will of the people so that issue is now over because pakistan has taken over part of uh, of pok the resolution has become infructuous that is the reason for that huh? now in jammu and kashmir government has been talking of rehabilitation of the kashmiri pandits what was the reason which led to this mass exodus of the kashmiri pandits from the valley sir it happened in 1990 and the main reason was the communalization with backing from pakistan the, the revival of the militancy and the targeting targeted killings of the kashmiri com- pandit community sir that by the terrorist groups which are operating in the valley yes sir okay and can i with with the pakistan which are these terrorist groups which are operating even now in the valley so there is the hm hindustan mujahideen i hizbul mujahideen hizbul mujahideen yes sir and sir then there is lt lashkar e taiba and then one more jm jm yeah what is the full form of jm uh, which of these groups was responsible for the attack in bombay sir in bombay it was jm if lashkar it was lt the jm was responsible for the parliament attack right okay now have you heard of aukas a trilateral alliance what is aukas sir aukas is basically a security pact between australia uk and usa and it promises to supply nuclear fueled submarines to australia by 2030 for deployment in which area for in indo pacific indo pacific area why was france uh, annoyed with this uh, decision sir the main reason behind the annoyance of france was that there was an agreement between australia and france for france to supply diesel electric submarines to you're right now these same countries there is a grouping 
uh, the quad you are aware of. Yes, sir. What is the significance of the Malabar Naval Exercise? Sir, Malabar Naval Exercise basically enhances the interoperabilities of the navies of the four countries. Which four countries? The quad countries basically, sir. And uh, Which are these quad countries? Sir, USA, Japan, India and Australia. When is the next uh, Malabar Exercise to be held? The, for the current year? Sir, I am not exactly. It's going to be held off the coast of Australia. Right? Okay. So we end your mock interview. All, the, All best. the best. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.